of the process, I will have, uh, I will have time to ask all the first uh, speakers to come. And uh, they can have uh, two, three minutes in order to present their first guest. First speaker is Etienne Baracha. This work um, consists with a study of the current aesthetic niche. So the biological concept of the current aesthetic niche is the following. There is a primary tumor uh, which secretes some uh, factors, uh, like growth factor, uh, which stimulates uh, distant tissue, for example the lung, uh, which in response uh, attracts some remote cells, like uh, bone marrow derived cells, um, which uh, will pre-colonize the, the organ uh, and secrete some chemokines to attract um, separating tumor cells and some uh, matrix remodeling factors to, uh, for the tumor cells engraftment. Um, and uh, these tumor cells will form a metastatic niche. So, um, in this work, we collaborate with a um, uh, person uh, from INSA, which did experimental um, experiments, um, uh, not totopic uh, Ranker cells model to. Um, to, to make a um, proteomic and transcriptomic analysis uh, of uh, the phenomena and uh, MRI uh, scheduling. So uh, our work is to analy analyze these data um, with a, um, a mathematical model, a mechanistic model, um, which is based on the uh, biological theory of uh, pre-metastatic niche, um, the um, cellular dynamics uh, are described by uh, differential ordinary equations, and the migration of cells by transport, chemotactic transport equations. Um, and one of the proposals is to to uh, to couple. Uh, this model with another model, a model of uh, metastatic, metastatic growth um, to um, uh, to discriminate and to uh, and to uh, analyze the the role and the function of the pre-metastatic niche and the influence in the global metastatic. Uh, burden dynamics um, and uh, for example uh, the two major function of a pre-metastatic niche uh, were compared um, um, in terms of, of the influence uh, to the metas global metastatic burden um, you're welcome to, to discuss in more detail so, interesting. Thank you. And now it's uh, Mathieu Bastard from uh, Genève and the Epicentre. Okay, so uh, this study uh, was done by Epicentre and Alexis Frontier. The idea is to use the joint modeling approach uh, to, to study the effect of the longitudinal CD4 cell count on mortality, on the HIV activation. So, as you know, survival is one of the main interests, especially in clinical research and HIV clinical research. And longitudinal markers are rarely taken into account in this, uh, in this analysis. So, uh, I will just present the, the model. So, the main idea is that the population is divided in a uh, subgroup sub following a similar, uh, almost similar trajectory of CD4. And uh, this different subpopulation have different research events. Uh, the, there are two parts for the model. The first part is the latent test mixed model. 
So, uh, let's do some model for this part. First, the longitudinal mix model to, to fit the longitudinal CFR count. And then, the latent class membership model to uh, estimate for each patient the probability of falling into one, uh, one of each latent class. And then, the, the second part is the time to event risk model, depending on the latent structure. Maybe the example would be more uh, easy to understand. So uh, we use uh, MSF courts in Malawi, Kenya, and Uganda to present an um, example up to six, uh, three three thousand patients, or up to six years on IRT, and we have uh, five point two percent patients died, and all these patients include uh, more than one one hundred thousand CD4 measures uh, over all the four years. So for this model, so the idea of, of, of us to, to study the, evolution, uh, the, the impact, the evolution of the seed forms on survival. So the model specification, we use uh, two latent class for the, long, the latent uh, model, and uh, preliminary two degree for the um, longitudinal uh, model, and a cox proportional uh, model for the survival part. <laughs> So we have all the results of monitoring tables, but we we'll just look at the graph, it's more easy to understand. So on the left, it's the representation of the two latent, uh, latent classes, the two longitudinal profiles, depending on the two latent classes. So on the top, it's the patient who follow the high CD4 trajectory over time, and on the bottom, patient who follow the low CD4 trajectory. And then on the right is the class event uh, survival probability. So we, we saw that for patients the high CD4 trajectory will have a high, higher survival rate, and for patients following a low CD4 trajectory, we have a lower uh, survival rate. Yeah, I'll finish it. You can see the poster. <laughs> Sorry, it's me. Thank you. You will have time to discuss the last time. So now it's Mario Salina, and uh, she's from Bravo, from the Nissan Institute. Hi, so the poster we are presenting today in, uh, is an overview of three uh, methods to join the model uh, time to event uh, endpoints. So this work was made in the context of the left hand initiative. The problematic is that uh, composite time to event endpoints, for example, prog progression free survival, are more and more used in uh, cancer randomized clinical trial as surrogate for overall survival. The problem is that uh, these time to event endpoints uh, use mainly lack of standardized definition, which limits uh, the comparison between trials. And it also has been proven that uh, the definition of the endpoint can have an impact on the estimation power. Uh, another problem is that these uh, endpoints have not been properly uh, validated as we get for overall survival. So in that context, the DEFCA initiative has two uh, objectives. First, to develop guidelines uh, for the definition of the time to event endpoints. This objective has been uh, reached for three cancer organizations, breast cancer, oncology cancer, and uh, sarcoma and youth. And uh, secondly, uh, to rank the time to event endpoints in order to help uh, choose the most appropriate one for uh, according to the therapeutic situation. Uh, the ranking will be based on a measure of the um, surrogacy capacity for overall survival. Um, so I'll put a uh, point on the surrogacy. A surrogacy method has been developed um, has been developed mainly uh, resting on the measure of two kinds of association, the individual level association, which measures the association between the endpoints, and the trial level association, which um, measures the dependency between the treatment effects on the endpoints. Uh, with that in mind, we, we looked into three methods to jointly model um, two tangible endpoints, uh, methods that are not actually used all, all of them are not actually used in the surrogacy study, but all of them allowing to measure the dependency, the association between uh, the endpoints. Um, so we think uh, could uh, help us uh, uh, reach our objective. 
So this we uh, made that our um, detailed end of us. Um, hopefully this review will help us define the best strategy to run uh, the time to event and run according to that uh, in terms of surrogacy for our survival. So now it's Antoine uh, Barbieritz coming from Montpellier uh, from the Institut uh, du Cancer. I will present a poster dealing with the longitudinal analysis of quality of life and more precisely about the use of the partial credit model. In this context, the Earth's related quality of life is uh, pretty difficult and complicated uh, Mesure because it is dynamic, subjective, and multidimensional concept. This, um, this is um, sorry. <laughs> this uh, this concept is uh, is to be is can't be a measure directly. Because it is thought to be a, a variable, a latent variable. Many questionnaires exist. Uh, many questionnaires uh, exist to measure uh, this kind of concept, and uh, such as uh, QLQ science. It is specific for oncology and composed of several scales, item, and response category. The data are qualitative and nominal. In addition to the classical analysis, we propose to use a longitudinal partial credit model from item response theory. This model can be seen such as a generalized linear mix model with multinomial monitoring. In the goal, uh, in the aim to assess the influence of expiratory variables over time and take into account variability from repeat measures. We decompose the latent tree data. And uh, for example, in our application, we assess uh, treatments and time effects. Thank you. Now, it's uh, Sébastien Benzécris from uh, the INRIA in Bordeaux. Thank you. Uh, so in my poster, it's entitled uh, uh, Mathematical Models of Tumor Growth. Uh, yeah, fine. Description and uh, descriptive and predictive properties of, um, of the of classical mathematical model of tumor growth. So as you see, uh, in the literature, you can find a lot of models that are designed to, um, to, to describe the longitudinal development of tumor growth. And what I did in this work was to Based on experimental data that I had in my, in my lab in Boston, uh, I performed the quantitative and discriminant analysis of these models for their descriptive properties that are represented here and for their predictive properties, including a detailed study of the prediction depth that you can ask to this model so that you use a certain number of data points to fit the model. And then you try to predict the future so you can see, as you can see on these plots, all the models don't, don't perform uh, the same, and then you can also use more or less data points and see, and that's, that's these plots where you have the number of data used and the number of the prediction left in, 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 in the y-axis. And uh, the last thing that was done was to, to study the impact of including accurate information on, on the population of, uh, of the animals and an independent population, and then you add this information in the fits, and you see, and, and as you can see, it improves uh, the quality of the text, uh, of the prediction. So please come and ask uh, me some questions if you want to know more uh, my poster is at the end. Thank you. And the last speaker is Audrey Morgwen from Bordeaux. Uh, good morning everyone. I invite you to come and see our poster dealing with external validation of the dynamic prediction of the risk of death using some relapses information. So the rationale is that the observed relapses may be useful to obtain some more accurate prediction uh, of the risk of death. 
And uh, previously, um, some individual prediction of the risk of death were already derived uh, in the form of, of the joint model for recurrent events and the terminal events. And uh, we will see that this afternoon with Virginie. And uh, these dynamic predictions were derived uh, using a hospital series. So patients were very selective. It was all operable uh, breast cancer treated in a comprehensive cancer center also diagnosed between 1989 and 1993 in France. And the poster presents uh, actually the result of the external validation, which was made of very different data sets. Uh, we use some registry data. So it's general population, no selection. And uh, the stations were diagnosed in 1996 in the UK. Um, the prediction accuracy was assessed using some usual tools, which are wire score calibration plots. And uh, we compare this prediction with the obtained from the landmark Cox model. And briefly, uh, the conclusion was that the prediction uh, obtained from our joint model gives the same uh, error prediction that those obtained from the landmark Cox model, but with slightly better calibration, especially for the high risk patients. And uh, overall, the calibration was good, even using a very different population. So thank you, and please do come to the